day 645 of the Trump administration, and it brought further proof that you should never bet against the feds. A Florida man suspected of mailing bombs to high-profile Democrats, including the homes of two former presidents, has been arrested. Earlier today, 56-year-old Cesar Sayoc was charged with five federal counts, including mailing of explosives, threats against former presidents, and assault of current or former officials. His first court appearance will be on Monday. He faces up to 48 years in prison if convicted on all counts. The break in the case came, thankfully, after a fingerprint was lifted off the outside of one of the packages. One of the bombs was mailed to Congresswoman Maxine Ward. According to officials, DNA evidence was further found on some of the devices. This morning, the FBI seized this white van owned by Sayoc that was covered with pro-Trump stickers. As you might imagine, it was a well-known and instantly recognizable vehicle in the local area where he lived. Of the visible and colorful imagery on the side, anti-CNN propaganda, targets and crosshairs aimed at Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama and Michael Moore and others. As our own Kerry Sanders reported earlier tonight, the suspect's very active social media profile paints a picture of an ardent Trump supporter. His Twitter feed showing him driving to Trump rallies, posting crowd chants, attacking CNN, cheering the president on in this selfie video, another recorded as the president spoke. Online, Sayak would go after many of the Democrats who received devices, saying of George Soros, you will vanish, and attacking Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz. NBC News is reporting that Sayak has an extensive criminal past. Quote, he was arrested in 2002 for threatening to throw a bomb. He pleaded guilty and was given a special sentence in which probation is ordered, but a formal conviction is not made. He was also arrested for theft in 1992 and 2014. Earlier tonight, an attorney for Sayak's family told CNN that his former client was very sick. I interacted with Caesar, and if I would say uh, apples, um, uh, he would say cardboard. He, he didn't react like a, a normal individual. He wasn't, he wasn't working on all cylinders. And, and, and this is a sad uh, result of someone who's very sick, didn't get the help, became a loner, and then found a cause that adopted and accepted uh, these types of people. He never seemed sophisticated enough to do something like he's accused of. And I wouldn't be surprised to find out that there were either others who helped prod or encourage him to do this, uh, or that the bombs, in fact, were so crudely made they never could have worked. We also learned today that four additional explosive devices have been found. They were mailed to Democratic Senators Kamala Harris and Cory Booker, former Director of National Intelligence James Clapper, and Trump critic and impeachment advocate Tom Steyer. This brings the total number of devices to 14. Tonight at a rally in North Carolina, President Trump praised law enforcement for the arrest and called for unity right before he again went after the news media. The media's constant unfair coverage, deep hostility, and negative attacks, you know that, only serve to drive people apart and to undermine healthy debate. For example, we have seen an effort by the media in recent hours to use the sinister actions of one individual to score political points against me and the Republican Party. Yet when a Bernie Sanders supporter tried to murder congressional Republicans and severely wounded a great man named Steve Scalise and others, we did not use that heinous attempt at mass murder for political gain because that would have been wrong. Later in the broadcast, we'll have more on this sudden injection of Bernie Sanders' name into this event. Before leaving for North Carolina, while still at the White House, President Trump was asked if he'd seen the suspect's van and if he'd reached out to anyone targeted with these devices. I did not. I did not see my face on the van. I don't know. I heard he was a uh, person that 
preferred me over others, but I did not see that. Uh, if they wanted me to, but I think we'll probably pass. We should point out that very early this morning, technically in the middle of the night, 3.14 a.m. East Coast time, the president turned to Twitter and said, quote, funny how lowly rated CNN and others can criticize me at will, even blaming me for the current spate of bombs and ridiculously comparing this to September 11th and the Oklahoma City bombing. Yet when I criticize them, they go wild and scream, it's just not presidential. Later in the morning, the president added this, quote, Republicans are doing so well in early voting and at the polls, and now this bomb, he sets off bomb in quotes, this bomb stuff happens and the momentum greatly slows. News not talking politics. Very unfortunate what is going on. Republicans go out and vote. This afternoon, officials, including the attorney general and the FBI director, briefed the media on today's arrest. At one point, the FBI director added that the pipe bombs are not a hoax. Each device consisted of roughly six inches of PVC pipe, a small clock, a battery, some wiring, and what is known as energetic material, which is essentially potential explosives and material that give off heat and energy through a reaction to heat, shock, or friction. Though we're still analyzing the devices in our laboratory, these are not hoax devices. With that, let's bring in our leadoff panel on a Friday night. And while there's plenty of time to talk about the politics of right now, first, let's talk about this investigation and this lightning fast arrest. Jim Cavanaugh is back with us, a retired special agent in charge for the ATF, the explosive experts at the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms. Malcolm Nance back with us, a veteran of Naval Intelligence, Special Ops, Homeland Security, 35 years on the job working in counterterrorism and intelligence. And Ariana Berg is back with us, a former assistant U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York. Well, Jim, anytime you've been on, I've listened carefully, and you've taught me over the years that every criminal eventually makes a mistake. We are thankful that this criminal made apparently more than one, and if there's a strange blessing to any of this, he left us with so much to go on. They had over a dozen pieces of hardware spread out in a lab to go over with a fine-tooth comb, correct? Uh, that's right, Brian. I mean, he was better at leaving evidence than he was at making bombs. Uh, and, you know, looking at that van, I mean, uh, uh, I'm reminded of Churchill's quote, you know, a fanatic is a guy who can't stop talking and won't change the subject. You can just see inside the mind of this guy. He's a fanatic about this, this, this topic, uh, and he wanted to go after his target. So, yes, a treasure trove of evidence, lots of fingerprints. It was a fingerprint, really, that broke the case. Uh, they were able to get a latent lift off an envelope, likely ran it through the automated system, got a hit on his arrest, DNA off a couple of IED parts inside the envelope, checked with FDLE, the Florida state uh, agents, got a pretty good match. You know, it's not a total, it's a, a pretty close match on the two parts. That's in the probable cause affidavit. And also uh, some of the misspellings. Uh, of course, he lived near the, the mailing center. Uh, and of course, when you see his van, the motive. So they had a pretty good uh, a criminal complaint, some good initial charges. There's going to be more and they're going to flush that all out. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it, there's going to be plenty of evidence. The question is, did he have any help, Brian? Was anybody else with him? Uh, DNA inside the bombs on IED parts, he's integral to it, but was he totally alone? So that's got to be flushed out. Malcolm Nance, we're obviously celebrating good news here tonight. And as I said, a lightning fast investigation, a lightning fast arrest. What, what worries you further beyond this case? Well, first, for this suspect, you know, you've really got to reevaluate your life choices when you wake up to the FBI hostage rescue team surrounding you and bringing you in as a terrorist, because that's what he is. And what we need to consider right now is, as Jim said, the key part of this investigation is, did he act alone? Did he de assemble all of these devices? Was he part of a team that assembled these devices? And most worrisome for me, uh, you know, is 
Where was the bomb factory? Where did he actually assemble these devices? Is there a, a, an entire pile of them left unmailed? And were other devices mailed and are now inside the mail stream, still en route to targets, waiting to be sorted and waiting for postal inspectors to find them? So this, this uh, terrorist campaign is not over by any stretch of the imagination till we get those things answered. Uh, Counselor Ariana Berg, I want to play for you an interview that took place tonight. This is uh, the suspect's former boss, a restaurant manager, a uh, brief part of a conversation she had on live TV tonight that opens a whole door to the kind of uh, the kind of mind we're talking about here. We'll talk about it on the other side. He definitely beat to the beat of his own drum. He was um, anti-gay, anti-black, anti-Jewish. You name it, everybody um, that really wasn't white and wasn't a white supremacist didn't belong in the world. That's what he used to say to me all the time. But I really was shell-shocked when I found out it was him. I, I really couldn't believe it because as far as an employee, he was on time, he was cordial, he was articulate. I never had any problems with him. Um, there was no theft. Uh, my customers liked him. Uh, but it was just his political views that scared me. Was he violent? Not at all. There was no violence at all. I mean, he made it a point. He knew I was a lesbian and a very proud lesbian. And he made it a point to tell me that, you know, God had made a mistake with me and that I should burn in hell. And He's, along he with my other black friends. He would just say that to you, just straight to your or, face. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Counselor, uh, if I appointed you prosecutor of this case, I think you'd probably put her on the stand, and I think you'd probably make special arrangements to drive that van right into the courtroom or get the jury, all of them, to go out on a field trip and see it in the parking lot. What else? Yes, absolutely. That van is a roving playbook for the crimes that Sayak was attempting to commit and did commit. And all of that evidence is something that prosecutors and law enforcement are poring over and looking at to get inside the mind of Sayak. What was motivating? What was animating him behind these crimes? If we look at the complaint, which was the charging document that the Southern District of New York filed, you'll notice that remarkably what is very not present in that complaint is about his political motiv motivations, his ideologies, which are literally advertised right on his van, on his Twitter account, and clearly in his statements to his former boss and other people that know him. But those are the kinds of things that potentially could be charged. There are crimes that would increase his maximum penalties to life imprisonment or more years than he has left alive. Mm. Those crimes absolutely look into those political motivations. He could be charged potentially down the road with attempted murder against a U.S. Mm. official in retaliation for the performance of their duties or attempted mm -hmm. murder against a former U.S. official or a family member of a former U.S. official, again, to intimidate or retaliate against them for their political ideologies. This is the clear definition of domestic terrorism. When someone does something in pursuit of a particular political, social, or religious agenda. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.